Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at SSD. In this episode specifically, we're asking the question, what is SSD? Well, SSD is short for Solid State Drives. Solid State Drives are a technology that replaces old school hard drives inside a notebook or other sort of devices that use storage of some sort. The old school drives were mechanical in nature. They had a spinning platter and a head that went back and forth and read bits on the surface of the magnetic uh, platters inside the hard drives. Inside solid state drives we use flash memory technology. Now you're probably already familiar with flash memory from inside USB key storage devices or inside the cards like Secure Digital that come inside your digital camera. Now the storage devices inside your notebook computer are moving from mechanical to flash memory based devices like SSD for a few different reasons. Number one, in typical use, flash memory tends to run much faster than mechanical drives. With the mechanical drives, you have a spinning platter, and there's latency, or a little bit of a wait time, every time you wait for the platter to come around to the right place where the bit of data is. With flash memory, it's instant access to any of the bits of data that are already on here, which means that you can get access to the data much faster than you can with the mechanical drive in most cases. This can also mean much faster boot time in a lot of cases. So if you have a machine that needs to be booted up in a hurry with an old school mechanical drive, it might take a long time, whereas the flash, it'll take a fraction of the time. We saw that recently at CES in Vegas when we saw a boot up of a flash drive based MacBook Air versus a mechanical drive. Now one of the other key advantages of flash memory based devices like SSD over the old mechanical ones is these ones can be actually a lot smaller than the mechanical counterparts. That's because these ones have spinning devices inside and a read write head and a little motor that kicks things around whereas these are just electronics. Now typically you'll see devices like this at about the same size when you're using them as replacement because you need to fit into the same spot in the notebook computer where this one came out of without it rattling around. But these devices can actually be much, much smaller than these ones, which means that a new generation of devices, when they're designed around the solid state drives, not inside cases designed to replace these, can be actually a lot smaller. Another benefit of the fact that there's no moving parts, like in the old mechanical drives, is these ones actually can run a lot cooler because there isn't the power required to spin up a platter and to move a, a motor around and uh, move the head around to get to the right place. And this is all just strictly retrieval electronically speaking. It can actually run a lot cooler. So while there is a little bit of heat generated, it's nowhere near the amount of heat generated by spinning up a platter like this to 7200 RPM. It takes a lot of energy. The other thing is it also takes a lot less power to do that because, again, there's no moving parts and you don't have to keep powering up the drive. One other benefit of the lack of mechanical parts like you'd seen in old school hard drive is the lack of susceptibility to damage when you're dropping the device. If you drop a device like a notebook computer with a mechanical drive inside it, while it's running or reading and writing, the head is over top of the platter and when you drop it, it can actually damage the surface of the disk and actually make it unusable. When you have a device like this that's all electronic, it still can be damaged when you drop it, but it's less susceptible to that kind of damage to the physical media. It actually has a lot more ability to recover from that sort of thing. Now, if you've done any shopping on SSD drives, you'll notice that one of the downsides is they do tend to be much more expensive per capacity. So if you have a 128 gigabyte drive on both sides of the equation, the mechanical drive will be a lot less expensive at this point. That's coming down from where it used to be, but still there is a price premium on SSD drives at this point. Another big downside for the moment is that the drives that you see in the SSD space are lower capacity than the ones you'll see in the mechanical space. You have drives in the mechanical space of one terabyte or more. You can see drives of that capacity inside SSD, but they're insanely expensive. So to get the best bang for your buck, you still want to go for mechanical. If you're looking for performance, you do want to go SSD, but you will be limited in terms of space on the drive most likely, unless you have an astronomical budget. That's worth noting that flash memory technology uses little cells inside that spin between one and zero using an electrical charge. And they can only be flipped back and forth so many times. So that means that a flash memory drive, at a certain point, those bits will stop flipping and the drive will become less useful. The capacity will start to go down and down and down and down. Of course, mechanical drives fail eventually as well. When they do fail often, they do fail completely, so you don't get access to any of the data on the drive anymore without expensive recovery. With SSD, it's just a gradual decline in most cases until the drive doesn't have enough storage needs for you anymore. That's it for what is SSD. Don't forget to check out the other parts in the series where we'll show you how you can upgrade to an SSD drive on your notebook, and we'll also show you how to upgrade the new MacBook Air that has a solid state drive already built in. For show notes on this and the other parts in the series, don't forget to check out butterscotch.com. Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. 
In this series, we're taking a look at SSD. In this episode specifically, we're going to show you how to upgrade from a mechanical drive to an SSD drive. Now, with most notebooks, you have a mechanical drive on board, and in most cases, you can upgrade to an SSD drive. Now, before you buy an SSD drive, you'll want to check what the interface is on your old drive. You can often find this out on the spec sheet for your notebook computer, or you can find out by going inside and pulling the drive out. If it has the pins, or if it says PATA, P-A-T-A, or IDE, it's the old school drive. If you have a serial ATA drive, or SATA, or it has the edge connector, then you have one of the newer drives. Now, most of the new SSD drives will come with SATA connections, although you do have old PATA style, or IDE connections, on SSD as well, if you want to get one of these. Now, before you just rip out your old drive and replace it with your new drive, you'll probably want to back it up or copy the information from your old drive straight over to your new drive. Now, you can back it up to an external hard drive and then copy it over again if you want, or if you want to get an external drive reader, like this dock here right here, which you can put your old drive into, or your new drive, and then just copy from one to the other. Or you can get a kit like this one from iMation, which is an enclosure that you get that has the new drive inside it, copy the information to this, and then swap the drives out, and then you can use your old drive as an external drive using this enclosure. Now you'll need a bit of software to do this. You'll need something like SuperDuper for the Mac or a Cronus TrueImage for the PC. Often that comes with a kit like this or you can download it separately. You can see this whole process in greater detail in the How to Upgrade Your Hard Drive series also here on Butterscotch.com. Now once you're done backing up or creating a clone of your old drive, you want to power down your notebook. You want to open up the place where the drive lives, remove all the screws, swap the position of your old drive and your new drive, Make sure to reverse any steps that you needed to get that old drive out. And then seal it back up. If you cloned your old drive to the new drive, you should be ready to just boot up your PC and be ready to go. If not, you'll have to do a setup process on the new machine with your operating system of choice, and then copy the old data back over. Once you've upgraded the old drive to your new SSD drive, your system should boot faster, should run faster, and it should run cooler to boot. Don't forget to check out the other parts in the series where we show you how to upgrade your MacBook Air. We'll also show you external drives and we'll explain what SSD is. For more information on this and the other parts in the series, you can go over to the show notes at butterscotch.com. Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at SSD drives. In this episode specifically, we're taking a look at external SSD drives. Why would I want one and how do I use one? Now, if you're already using a USB key, which uses flash memory, you're already most of the way to an SSD drive. In fact, much of what distinguishes this from an SSD external drive is the packaging. This uses the same technology inside, but it does have the USB tip built right into it. and It's a little bit ruggedized around the outside for fitting into your pocket without getting too damaged. Now, SSD drives are often ruggedized a little bit more, but they're built into a bigger package, and they're usually higher capacity as well. So while these ones typically come in capacities of maybe 1, 2 gigabytes, higher if you're a power user, these ones come in capacities of 64 gigabytes or more because you want to store a lot more data externally than you would on, say, a USB key. These drives also come with an external cable, which supplies power and data to the device. In this case, we have the Kingston HyperMax 3.0, which uses a USB 3.0 connection for faster speeds. Now, you can use external SSD drives using the older USB 2.0 technology, but it won't be quite as fast, although you still can use it. Now, there are a number of advantages to using an external SSD drive instead of the old-school mechanical external drive. Number one, they're more rugged. You can actually take a little bit more of a knocking than you can with a mechanical drive. If you have a mechanical drive on the edge of your desk, for example, and it falls off, it could get damaged just dangling around and hitting the side of the desk. Whereas one of these, it can take a little bit more of a shock because they're designed a lot more tightly and there's no moving parts inside. Number two, because they're all electronic and no moving parts inside, it runs cooler than an external mechanical drive and it also uses less power. So if you're pulling all of your power off the USB bus and getting the power straight from your notebook computer, it won't claw back on your battery quite so fast as a mechanical drive. Of course, the lack of moving parts inside the SSD drive also means that you can actually create a much smaller device, as opposed to the mechanical drives, which require a motor and a bunch of spinning platters and all that other stuff. So you can actually get a much smaller, more compact and portable device when you're going to SSD. Now, the disadvantages of the external SSD are much the same as the internal SSD drives. They're generally much smaller in capacity, and per gigabyte, they are a lot more expensive than the old-school mechanical drives. 
Now, of course, one of the reasons people use external drives is to store a lot of data which the internal drive on a notebook won't handle. And this can be a real problem if you're deciding to go to SSD because it can get insanely expensive getting a drive of that capacity. So if you're planning to store a lot of data, for example, you're storing high definition video for editing, you'll probably still want to use an old school mechanical drive just because the capacity is a lot less expensive even though it is a little bit more fragile when it's out in the field. Don't forget to check out the other parts in this series where we'll show you how to upgrade your MacBook Air to an SSD drive. We'll show you how to swap it in your notebook computer and we'll also tell you what SSD is. You can see the show notes for this and the other parts in this series at butterscotch.com. Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers and welcome to How to Why on butterscotch.com. In this series we're taking a look at SSD. In this episode specifically we're going to talk about how to upgrade the SSD drive on your MacBook Air 2010 edition. Now the new MacBook Airs are a bit of a special case. Unlike the traditional Windows-based notebook or even the older Mac-based notebooks, it doesn't actually have a discrete SSD drive in the shape of an old hard drive inside. In this case it just uses something called a module. Now a module contains all the same components that a regular SSD drive does, it just doesn't have all the packaging to fit into the space that an old hard drive would have vacated. So it allows the SSD module to be a lot smaller than an old school hard drive. Now what that means is you can't just walk into a store and buy one off the shelf like you could with an SSD designed to replace an old hard drive and fit into the same space. You can order them online however, and we got ours from Otherworld Computing at MacSales.com. Now while initially people thought that the SSD drive on the MacBook Air wasn't upgradable, it is in fact. You can take the old one out and take the new one, in this case we've got the Mercury Pro Aura Express, and just slide it back into the same interface that the old SSD drive came out of. In the past, Apple used something called a Torx screw to fasten the backing plates to the back of the MacBooks. But they try to keep you out of these things for the most part because they don't want you monkeying around inside and wrecking the computer and wrecking your warranty. Now they've switched over to a newer type of screw that is less common and you might have trouble finding the screwdriver for this. It's called a pentalobe. Now in this case, you do get the screwdrivers inside the kit, so you don't have to worry about that so much. Now if you do find a replacement module for the MacBook Air, but you don't have the screwdriver itself, you can order these separately online as well. Now before you start the process of swapping the modules out, because the modules do function like the hard drives, you will want to back up the data from your MacBook Air to an external drive and then copy it over to the new one once you have that installed. Now you can use something like SuperDuper or you can just use Time Machine to back up to an external drive and then pull that information over once you're done. So the first step in the process, of course, is to power down your MacBook Air and remove it from the power. Then remove the screws all the way around the backing plate of this and keep them in a safe place so you don't lose them. They're very hard to replace. Inside you'll see a bunch of battery modules and then something that looks like a traditional stick of RAM. This is actually your SSD module. It's secured inside using a single screw with a Torx screw. Remove this screw using the Torx screwdriver that came in the kit or inside another kit that you purchased separately. Lift the SSD module slightly and slide it out sideways. Then you can take your replacement module from Otherworld Computing and then slide it back in. Replace the screw using the Torx screwdriver, replace the backing plate, and then put all the screws back into place. Then flip the MacBook Air over again and fire it up. You'll need to use the USB recovery key that came with your MacBook Air to reinstall the operating system on here. During the installation process, you will come to a point where it asks you if you want to bring over your data from another Mac. At this point in the process, you plug in your external drive that you backed up to using Time Machine or SuperDuper, plug it in, and point the installation to that particular drive. You'll then pull over all your old data, including applications and settings and accounts. And then when the installation is done, you're done, and you have a new SSD drive on board with more capacity to boot. Don't forget to check out the other parts in the series where we show you how to install an SSD drive in a typical notebook computer, and we'll also show you what it is and how to use one externally. For the show notes on this part and the other parts in the series, go over to butterscotch.com.